Hi, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and today we're talking about Shannon Cuddle Quilts. They are so adorable. Let's take a look at these quilts behind me. These are part of a series called the Fabulous Five. They have five different fabrics, and you can assemble them so easily. And this is the one we're working on today, this one right here, this ladybug quilt. And they're just darling. They come in kits, and they come in you know, lots of different fabrics and choices. This is how the kits looked, which isn't that cute. And you can see the five different fabrics up here. And I'm going to show you how to put these together. So today we're making a quilt from a kit. And this is our kit right here, and it comes with five different fabrics plus the binding and the pattern, so that's really cool. And then you're going to need a yard and a half of backing fabric. When all is said and done, this quilt ends up being 38 and a half by 58 inches. So it's just this perfect size right here for a lap or a baby or, or something like that. It's just a great little size. So you're also going to need some other things that are going to really help you. You're going to need batting that's the same size as your backing fabric. And you're going to need this 505 adhesive. Uh, you're going to need a marker, a chalk marker pen, and I'm using this uh, clover. And it's helpful to have a walking foot also. That's really, really super helpful. And then, of course, your regular things, your rotary cutter, your ruler, all that sort of thing. So the only difference between working with cuddle and working with regular fabric is you just have to take a little bit more time and be a little bit more careful. So the fabrics in these kits come in 10 inch pieces and you're going to cut them in different sizes and it shows you on this chart which is on the back of your pattern exactly what sizes uh, you need to cut them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of this on right here in front of you so that you can see it and I have a couple of pieces here. So this one right here is just the regular nap of the cuddle. Now, before, before we begin, I just want to say that Shannon was so wonderful to me. They sent out a cuddle specialist. So they sent out Gail, and Gail and I got to spend a day and a half together uh, making all kinds of cuddle things. We just had such a grand time. And, um, and I'm telling you, it was just so much fun. And it's just really interesting to learn all the tips and tricks that make cuddle quilts so easy. And they're just so gratifying when they're done because, of course, they're so soft. They're the furriest things ever. I love them. All right, so this piece right here is this piece, and it's going to be a five-inch piece. So we're just going to cut this in half. Now, I'm just going to, I've just got this, my ruler on here, just like normal. We're just going to go ahead and cut it. It cuts super easy. You know, it just... It's just super easy and quick, just like normal. Now, one of the things um, Gail suggested, and we're not going to do here on air because it's too loud, but she actually uses um, a vacuum cleaner and vacuums the edges of hers. You can also toss them into an unheated dryer, and I'm just going to give them a little shake so that we are not covered with cuddle dust by the time this whole video is open over. So the floor will get the dust, hopefully not me. All right, then this little piece... Look how gorgeous this is. This is called Rose, I think it's Rose Cuddle, and it just got these swirly little roses on top. And I am going to lay this on here, straighten up this edge, and let's see what I need to do here. I've got to cut four of those. They're at two and a half inches. So let's just go ahead and make those cuts. There's one. Now there we go. That, that's a lot of fluff there. Look, we're rain and cuddle dust. Cut another one. And I am lining my ruler up. My ruler's being my guide. <laughs> this is so funny to me. <laughs> Okay, so we had to clean up a little bit after that furry dust, but here we are back and ready to go. And now what we have to do is we have to take special care, because I've got all the other pieces cut, we have to take special care to line up our backing and our batting. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to set these down here, and I'm going to pull out my backing and my batting. Okay. 
Okay, so once you get your two pieces adhered and together, and it helps to have an extra set of hands, it really does, then you want to watch the nap. Now, when I talk about nap, this is what I'm talking about. When you brush cuddle one way, it's really smooth. That's the nap. This is the opposite nap. When you come the other way, it's going to like lift off. So when you go to put your strips on, you want to make sure they all lay nice and they go the same direction this way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. And again, we're going to find our little center. And we are going to draw a line on it. Now these strips are going to be set on here, selvage to selvage. So your strip width is going to be perfect with the width of your quilt. So we're going to draw a line on here right down the center so that we can, uh, we can make sure and um, line our strips up nice and straight. I know Gail used a T-square for this and that would be really helpful. You can also fold, fold your, your batting and make sure there's a nice center line to go on. Fold it from the center and start it. Now because our center piece that we're sewing on is 10 inches, I'm actually going to draw a line 5 inches out from the center so that I can line it up on the edge as well. There we go. So there's our lines. Now we're gonna, I'm going to bring up my fabric again and I'm going to set it out here to the side like this so I have my pieces ready to go. And I am going to get my 10 inch center ladybugs right here and we are going to lay this down on the center. Because it goes selvage to selvage you'll know exactly where it goes on there. Now you want to lay it to the edge and we're going to fold this back and we're going to put some um, adhesive on there to hold it on. The adhesive is so helpful. We want to make sure though that we don't get any adhesive on the actual cuddle so we're going to use some freezer paper and I am, uh, it's just something to protect. You can use really any kind of paper will work. It's just something to protect that spray from getting on the on the actual cuddle. So I'm going to bring out a piece that's pretty good size. Oh, this way. And I'm just going to lay this here like this and slide it under here so that when I'm spraying my piece of cuddle, I'm not really getting it on anything else. I'm centering up on my lines. A little bit of spray, roll it back. Make sure it's on there. I'm also going to put a couple of pins in here. I know you're shocked. I'm using pins. <laughs> I actually want this to turn out really good. All right, here's our last bit. I'm just going to roll this down and then we're going to put a couple of pins in here. Alright, right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to attach our strips side to side like this. And I'm going to turn this because one of the things that's important on this is that we pin on the ends and we pin on in the middle. So the next strip to be added is going to be this little black and white polka dot one right here. So I'm going to grab one of those. I'm going to find the center like this and I'm going to pin it right here in the center. Right here. And you know, Gail really likes these um, flower head pins, and uh, and she pins from the out of the seam in outside of the seam in, and that seems to be really helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and match up my ends, and what she does is she pins ends and middles, and then halves them again and again, so that we make sure that we don't get any rumpling at all. Alright, so then we're going to go right here in the middle 
of these two and put a pin in, the middle of these two and put a pin in. And you really do want to pin these because um, it really does make a difference. All right, we're all pinned in, ready to go. Now, a couple other tips. Before we start sewing, a couple of other tips. Uh, you're going to want to use a walking foot, and I have a walking foot right here. This is a walking foot, and um, it just keeps all the layers moving at the same time. And I'm going to show you how to put that on. This little bar right here slides over the needle bar on your sewing machine. And that's, the, that's a little bar that comes out that makes your needle go up and down. And then the rest of it attaches like a normal foot. So I'm going to come over here to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how this little needle bar right here slides right over the top of that right there. Can you see that pretty good? And then we're just going to screw that on. I'm a lot handier with a screwdriver than I look right now. There we go. The other thing you're going to want to do is um, you're going to sew half inch seams, which is a little different than our, uh, than our normal quilting seams. Normally we're at a quarter of an inch. We're going to sew half inch. Just gives us a little more room. We're also going to lengthen our stitch to about three and a half or four. Just a little bit bigger stitch. And then you also want to have as large of a work table as you can. Now I have kind of a little table over here, but if you have a, if you have a, one of those big things that comes out that holds it, it just really helps on the sewing of it. So I'm going to put these things down here so I don't knock anything off when I bring the bulk of this fabric over here. I'm going to bring it around here and we are just going to sew right down this one side. Okay, here we go. It helps also to hold this in your lap. Oh, hang on a minute. There we go. Hold it in your lap, hold it up, put a hand underneath so you can feel what's happening. And just let her, let her go in there. I'm not actually to the quilt yet. once I get that all hooked on. You want to watch and make sure um, because of the nap of Cuddle it actually uh, is, it can slide over and you can lose your lose your uh, spot where you were so. Now you don't want to pull it. What I'm doing right here is holding on to it not pulling it because I don't have a big table over here to lay it out on. You just want to let it go through. Let that, let that, um, let that, uh, what is this called? <laughs> I can't think of the name. Walking foot. Let the walking foot do the work. This does work really good on a big flat surface. And you can see I've got my hand under here. I'm helping to guide it through, letting that, uh, letting that um, walking foot do its work. Oops, I just sailed over a pin, didn't I? Always better to take them out. I forget that sometimes. All right, there we finished that one. Now let's go take a look at it. You wanna check your back and make sure there's no, uh, no folds or anything and our back looks good. So we're going to fold this over, take out the pins we missed. You always want to check too to make sure your naps are going the right direction when you put this on. And We got lucky on this one. I forgot to check it first but we got lucky on it and it's going to lay just perfectly. What's cool about this is that you are going to, uh, you're going to have a whole quilted quilt when you're done with these strips. And so what I'm going to do now is I am going to um, adhesive this back, a little bit of spray adhesive, and I'm going to need my big paper. I'm putting it shiny side down like this so I don't get any spray on my on my cuddle and I'm just going to put a, just a tiny bit on this to to uh, help it stick down so that it lays down really nicely 
and stays in its place. A spot here and there. All right, tricks of the trade, the adhesive. Let's get down here and do this one. All right, just pet it out. Just like that. Such, oh, I love this stuff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our strip to the other side. So you go from side to side on this. And again, it's going to be another one of these little black uh, dot ones. Must still be under, oh, here it is. We're going to find the center. Put a pin in there. Get my pins back out here. And then find the center of this, which is here. And we're going to pin that right there. And then we're going to pin our ends. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So I just finished that red strip. So let's see how it looks. We're going to, isn't it just so cute? I love how it just kind of lifts up like that. Look how beautiful that is. All right, let's go ahead and baste it down. And we're just going to keep doing this and continuing on out. All the strips out on either side. Referring to our diagram, making sure that they're, you know, we're matching them up and getting them just right. And then we'll meet back here when we've got it ready to put the binding on. Okay, so now I've gotten all my rows sewed. I've basted, you know, uh, spray basted my last row. And we need to trim this out because it's time to put on the binding. So I use the edge of my quilt as a square and I also use my strips to line up. So we're just going to go ahead and trim this right down. And this is the side along the strip. And your strips are cut straight, so they should be pretty straight to trim against. We're hoping that yeah, you cut them straight. <laughs> and then, so now here on the bottom, you can see they're all different lengths. So I want, you, want to show you how to do that. I'm going to use the edge of my um, quilt as a squaring. And I'm going to use these strips along here to keep it lined up square. Then I just keep doing the same thing, making sure it's still square. I want to make sure I trimmed off enough here to uh, not get the selvage on the back. Yep, we're good. All right, so now we're down to where we're going to put the binding on. Now the binding is done just like you normally bind another quilt, except a little bit easier. This binding, um, we've cut, it's two inches wide instead of two and a half, and the reason is we don't have to fold it under. So we're going to sew this together, we're going to cut our strips and sew it together just like you'd sew a normal binding, which means end to end with a, um, you know, you're going to sew it on the diagonal. You won't need as many strips because all cuddle cloth is uh, 60 inches wide. Well, not all, but, you know, this happens to be 60 inches wide. We're going to go across here like this. And we're going to go ahead and just sew these together. All right, let's trim these off. And again, you could probably see on this, my stitch length is quite, uh, quite large. That's, you want that. You want to lengthen your stitch length that makes it easier to sew with, with cuddle. And I'm just carefully, for those of you who are worried I'm going to cut my finger off, I'm just carefully trimming these edges. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew it onto the front. So I'm going to start in the middle like I always do. Sew it onto the front like this. Again, you're going to go ahead and pin all the way around. And when we get the front completely sewn on, 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over to the back and we're just going to do a wide serpentine stitch and it's all done on the machine so it makes it super easy. So let's go ahead and put this on here. I'm just going to pin it in a few places and then I'm going to get started. So you can see I've moved my sewing machine over to the center of my table because it really helps to have this big table out here to have some room to lay your quilt on otherwise you are going to feel like you wrestled a bear. So I, uh, I didn't want to wrestle a bear today so I decided to move my machine over here and we're just sewing on our binding straight down the side just like a normal binding. Okay, so now I'm at a place, I've got my binding all the way around where I need to finish uh, sew my ends together and so here's how I do that. You need a little, about six inches extra on either side and, and this is one of those good tricks so let me see if I can get this flat so you can see this. There we go. So however wide your binding is, that's how far you're going to overlap it. So ours is two inches so we're going to overlap it two inches and just trim it. And then we're going to sew it together just like we'd normally sew it together. So we bring it around the side of the sewing machine. And we're going to put this top piece right here, um, right sides up, and the bottom piece um, so that they go right sides together. And then just how we sewed our binding together where we did it, you know, the plus method where you cross over and sew edge to edge, we're going to do that on this as well. I'm going to back stitch a little bit right there. Sew across. Now before you cut it, you want to make sure that it's going to fit right on there and this is going to be perfect. So then you just sew it down. Let me get this up over here. And under the presser foot you go. Sometimes you have to lift up that guy a little bit, give him a little extra room. Then we're just going to sew this down. Take out my two pins I started with. And there we go. Alrighty, now what we're going to do is just flip the whole thing over and do a serpentine edge all around the outside edge. Okay, so I've got my, my foot changed, I've got black thread on here, and we're ready to sew down this binding. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right from the end and I'm going to pull my binding so that it just meets up at the stitch line. Now if, if you want to you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to fold it, you can leave it flat, whatever you want to do. And I am just going to lay mine so that it meets up at the stitch line. And then I'm going to do this great serpentine or a stitched zigzag. Uh, because it only meets at the line, it should completely cover in the front like this. See that? Look at that. That looks great. So easy to bind this way. So we're getting close to this corner up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my corner lays flat as I'm going into it. So this side that I'm sewing on is going to lay folded all the way off the edge and then just before I get there I'm going to go ahead and lay my other piece over it and that's going to make um, that 45 angle and then I can just sew right around the corner. Make sure that this stays tucked under there. You might need a stiletto or the end of your scissors. And then we're just going to come down here. Keep going. 
and just do that little fold. You're going to pull it up on one side and uh, over it with the other. So let's just finish the other three sides and I'll meet you back here. So we are all done with this. Look how gorgeous it is. I mean, it's just so pretty and so soft. You just can't believe how soft this stuff is. So then I got to thinking, what else can we do with the Shannon Cuddle fabric? And I thought, what about applique? And so I just want to show you, look how darling this is. We did this applique giraffe. He's just so cute. And what about a pillow? Look at this. This is just adorable. And look at all the different kinds of cuddle fabric there is. We also used a children's toy pattern and we made this darling little elephant. So anything you can do with fabric, you can do with Shannon Cuddle Cloth. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the fabulous five quilts from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.